This video is sponsored by Proco. Samsung's newest tablet isn't that new, and I'm not even mad. They've taken the S6 Lite from a few years ago, updated the internals, and re-released it. Is this still the best budget digital art tool around? Yes, I think it is. So, review over. Let's wrap it up and go home. No, we gotta do it still. All right. Joking aside, I love this thing. I have spent the last two years telling people about the S6 Lite. What Samsung has done is they've taken their top of the line S series Android tablets and they cut out a bunch of features and sold it for a lot less money. But, and this is important, the features that they decided to cut were the right features. Their display is not the top of the line AMOLED display. That's okay, it's good enough. It only has a 60 hertz refresh rate. That's okay, it's good enough. This is not the top of the line processor out there, but that's okay, it's good enough. The cameras aren't the best, but that's okay, they're good enough. You see the trend here? I hope they see the trend here. Plus, they didn't cut out the S Pen. It's still packed in at no extra cost. Now this is similar to the path that Apple's taken with their iPad line. Keep the price down by just updating the things you absolutely need to update consumers win. Plus, and I think this is really important, right now this tablet costs $350. That's not a bad price for what you're getting. However, Samsung tends to discount their hardware over time. And in a few months, I wouldn't be surprised if this is down to $300 or oftentimes what you saw with the old models after a little bit longer, you'd see it for like $250, which is a crazy good deal for what you're getting. One thing to note, if you're in the US, they are not selling this yet. They're still selling the old one. I had to order mine on eBay, have it shipped in from Hong Kong. So if you are buying this now, make sure you get the 2022 version. That is very important. So what is new in this 2022 version? Just the processor. That's it. That's the only thing. It now has a 720G processor in it, and it is just screaming. I'm okay. I'm just okay. Just a little faster now. Oh, you thought I meant screaming fast. No, sorry. No, didn't mean that. Now, over the last few months, the one thing that was giving me pause about recommending the S6 Lite is that it's two years old. It wasn't the most powerful processor to start with, and after two years, it's going to start to show its age. But now that they've updated the one thing that was holding me back, problem solved. And going back to what I said before, the other components aren't the best, but they're good enough. Throughout this video, you've probably seen me drawing this pumpkin head character in the background, and I really like how it turned out. What I've been doing is I've been taking a course by today's sponsor, Proco. Proco.com is an online learning community for artists with high quality lessons on drawing, painting, and sculpting. The course I'm taking is called Character Design Monster Lab, and it's taught by Scott Flanders. He goes through a lot of his process and how he comes up with ideas, and then he picks out the best one and he develops his characters off of those. And he walks you through everything from that idea phase all the way through his digital art process. I'm digging it. I'm making things that I never would have made otherwise. Even though Scott and I followed the same steps, our creatures came out totally different. And it's not just creating monsters. There are a ton of courses here on Proco. There are the fundamentals like figure drawing or anatomy or portrait drawing, but it goes deeper with classes on the blender basics or animating a run walk cycle. If you're a beginner, a hobbyist, or an industry pro, you're gonna find something on Proco for you. They believe in a strong community and how essential it is for personal growth. Get the support of other art students who will provide encouragement, communication, and inspiration. The first 100 people to use the code COLBO20 will get 20% off their first order on Proco. Check out my link down below in the description to get started. So let's start with the screen. It's 10.4 inches corner to corner with a 2000 by 1200 resolution. It's got that Snapdragon 720G processor, four gigabytes of RAM, and it comes with either 64 gigabytes of storage or 128. I think if you're planning on using this for art and illustration, it gets the job done for most tasks. One place where you're gonna see a difference is probably gaming. You also get a solid battery out of this thing. I would expect maybe five, six hours of drawing time out of it. Your mileage may vary based on on what you're doing. There's an eight megapixel camera along the back and a five megapixel camera along the front. Then there's the S Pen, completely battery free. Now this is not the top of the line S Pen that you find in the S8 line, so you are giving up some features, some of the Bluetooth features specifically, but I'm okay with that. But as far as drawing experience goes, this pen is almost identical. The pen also magnetically sticks to the side of the tablet. It's not a super strong magnet. I wouldn't slide it into your bag like this, but for just holding it while you're not drawing, it's good. The back end is a brushed aluminum. This comes in four colors, pink, blue, gold, and gray. The model that I have here is the Wi-Fi model, but you can also get this as an LTE edition as well. So this is a solid little tablet, but I think the question many of you are probably asking is, 
okay, what bells and whistles am I missing from, say, the S8 line? Well, first of all, you're not going to get a fingerprint reader or any of the biometrics that you get on some of the larger tablets. Also, this only comes in one size, 10.4 inches. The S8 line has the Plus and the Ultra, which are significantly bigger. You may feel a little cramped in some drawing apps. Clip Studio, Krita, both of those have a lot of interface elements, and on a smaller screen, they're just kind of harder to navigate. I don't think it's that bad. The other thing is this can run any Android drawing app just fine. So that means if you're using something like, I don't know, iBez Paint X, which is a more minimal interface, that's not really going to matter at all. Another thing worth mentioning is this doesn't have quite as many peripherals from Samsung available for it. For example, there aren't connectors along the bottom so you could connect a keyboard to it. There's probably some third parties out there that let you connect like a keyboard via Bluetooth. That probably works just fine. There are also some benefits to having an older design. For example, this hole. What does that do? Oh my gosh, it's a headphone jack. What kind of magic? is this? They still make those? One thing that some of you might miss on this tablet compared to the other tablets is Samsung's second screen feature. It's not available here. I'm assuming that it just needs more horsepower in order to work properly. What that does is it turns this tablet into a second screen and it has some drawing functionality to it. So you can use it kind of like a Wacom tablet, not quite as responsive, a little more laggy than that, but you get the idea. Okay, let's talk about drawing, the S Pen. From a drawing standpoint, this is the same S Pen that Samsung packs into all of their devices. I did mention that it doesn't have as many features as the newer ones, but that's okay. It does exactly what I need it to do, which is draw well. So if you've seen me talk about the S Pen before, this may sound a little redundant, but if you haven't, this is worth mentioning. It is a really nice pen. You get smooth, crisp lines. It holds pressure well. I get really good ends to my lines. Overall, I just feel like I have a lot of control when I'm using this pen. How does the drawing experience compare to, say, the high-end S8 Ultra? Well, I think the big difference here is, say, the lag. On the S8 line, any of the S8s, you're going to have a higher refresh rate, you're going to have a faster processor, and so you're going to have less lag. I want to get too caught up in this. Obviously, I think it works better on the high-end tablets, but I don't think it's horrible here, and it's always the type of thing that looks worse on camera when I'm drawing with it than it does when you're actually experiencing it firsthand. The other thing worth mentioning is palm rejection. It's just okay. You're probably going to want to check and see if your favorite drawing app has a secondary palm rejection setting that you could toggle on and off inside of it. By default, if you're just drawing in a lot of apps, what you're gonna find is your palm is gonna leave a mark on the screen or you might occasionally accidentally zoom in or out while you're drawing. It's not horrible, but if you accidentally leave a mark on finished artwork and you have to constantly go back and clean it up, that only has to happen two or three times in a session to really become frustrated. The S Pen has a rubbery tip to it that gives you more control when you're drawing with it on a smooth glass screen. You do get used to it over the time. I've been using these S Pens for years now. So to me, drawing with this is just second nature. But I do remember when I started drawing with them, I was like, this does not feel normal. There's not like that texture to it that you get when you're drawing on paper. I have been asked before, can I get a matte screen protector for this? And you can, but I'm not sure I would go down that route. The main reason why, since it is a soft rubber tip, a matte screen protector is probably gonna chew it up and burn through that nib pretty quickly. This does not come with any extra nibs, so once you burn through it, you're gonna have to go out and find something that fits it or get a new pen. I also wanna talk about apps because Android apps have gotten way better over the last few years, especially since I last reviewed this tablet. Nowadays, you can get Krita, you can get Clip Studio Paint on Android. These are pro-level apps. They've also been out for about two years now, so I guess I should stop calling them new. But there are a bunch of others. I mentioned iBez Paint X earlier. I recently have started playing with that more. That's a really good program. I know a lot of artists like programs like Concept. There's Infinite Painter. Some of these are ad supported. Some of these are pay up front. Most of them have some kind of demo with some kind of like, Usually they come in around $10 to pay to make the ads go away or to unlock all the tools. And if you find an art app you really like, paying $10 to get it unlocked, for me personally, is, is a pretty good deal. And what about the pros and cons? Well, the pros are is you're getting a full Android tablet at a really good price. The cons are you're missing some of the features. Here's my bottom line, and you've probably picked it up at this point in the video. If you're on a budget, this is one of the best values out there, especially if you can find it on sale. The other really great value out there is the iPad. However, when you're looking at price, the iPad rarely drops in price, and you have to factor in $100 
for the Apple Pencil. I still think that entry-level iPad is a tremendous deal. However, when you break it down, it is going to be more expensive. But if you're getting this for drawing, also it's not gonna be super powerful, so I don't think it's the best gaming tablet. However, if you are getting this for drawing, it does really well. And the features that you're giving up don't really have a huge impact on that drawing experience. And that's why I think for this price, it is a really good value. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.